we will now look at the usual example, the start manager and the product. And we are going to look, look a little bit different than some. We are going to see how can we actually remove a lot of elements fulfilling some kind of condition. For example, we would like to remove our products for a quantity less than a given union limit. And of course, it would be obvious to use a for each loop, just traversing the array list stuff and then remove the elements that fulfill the condition. Remember, it starts with an array list and it is hosting items or elements of the type product. So here. So for each product P, inside the array list stack, I want to test something. I want to test if the quantity on this P is less than a given minimum, and if so, then I want to remove it. So let's find out if there is a method inside uh, P for the product. Inside product, we can see there's a quantity. This is the quantity I want to find. And we can see there's a method called get quantity. Start back again here. So if this quantity here is less than the minimum, and the minimum is given here as a parameter. to say I want to remove this remove method comes in two types one is working directly on the P here and the other one is actually working on the image we only look at this here enough there are no syntax errors. Right, so let's see how it's overweight in praxis. Start manager. Trading the start manager. Let's trade a product. create this product, I now want to add this product, and I actually want to do this a few times, so I have several products here. It doesn't matter that it's the same. See that inside the array list there are four elements. This is one of them, and we can see it's coffee. And you can say the quantity of them all are actually zero. Now I want to remove all products. less than let's say two quantity left on the start. So I call this method. Oops. Unfortunately something went wrong here. 
I got a confirm notification exception that is not good. And here we can say confirm is something about this. Check for notification. Now what happened here was that I'm looking through the username for each loop. And when I do the remove, I'm actually changing this array list. And the for each loop cannot handle that. It is simply not built up this way because when I move, I move to the next element and therefore I might overlook an element in between. It can for example so therefore this is simply not possible to do in Java this way. So we can immediately remove this method. Say it will be immediately when you're doing it. And you can add a few comments here. Good example of that one thing we can do it in a simpler way, but unfortunately, it was the wrong one. Right, so we'll have to do this here in another way. We're going to use something called an iterator. An iterator is a pointer, and this pointer is actually starts before the elements and will always be between the elements in the array list. This is also a void here. And again we we'll call it remove products. The first thing I do is I define this uh, pointer or iterator. Now inside the radius there is a method called iterator and it is actually returning an object reference to an iterator and it's binding this iterator to look on the stuff here. Then I will have to transverse and when I traverse and such a thing, I'm traversing actually the iterator. This loop here, while it has next, of course uh, that is not something that comes out of nowhere. It's because I cheated a little bit and I looked a little bit at the iterator. While it has next means as long as there are an element left in this array list, then we will move on. So this actually returns a true as long as there are elements, or false if there are no elements left to be checked. And we can uh, use, uh, we need to get something out here. dot next give me the next element in the list. Now this element fulfills a criteria. Here. Then I would have to remove the element. But I don't write stock here like before. Now I'm going to write it remove. We don't know what it is going to remove unless we know what's inside the remove method. You can see up here we actually had a p, but that is not necessary down here. Here we have this remove p, and here we just write remove. So which element is it going to be that it will remove? Well, the element is going to remove is built in like it will remove the last one found by it next. Let's see the parentheses here. Here. Okay, so this is the way one program, such a method here. 
it is also a strongly recommended way of removing elements. Let's try to compile and see if we are lucky. Yeah, here comes a little error here. It says it expected object that it is requiring P. That's because we didn't define this IT here iterator. So work on the type there. It's very easy to forget this part here. Let's compile it again. Ah, now it's working. So let's try again to do the example and see what happens this time. So we'll add a few of these here, just for the test. Inspection of this here now shows that there are three elements, and all three elements have the quantity set. Now, let's try to see what happens if we try to remove something, remove products, and I like one means everybody less than one, that means all of them, because all zero, should actually now be removed. So I expect if I open this and inspect again here, I will see there are none left, and we can see if you see this is covered. So our method is actually working. Of course you have to perform more tests like this, with various, uh, like somebody has maybe five or six uh, on the stock, quantity on stock and so on. But for our little example to show you what goes on, this here is uh, quite sufficient. Well, I think I've finished the day.